put a lot of importance on that upgrade that becomes much easier to remember. Shields and cannons, just gonna set those cannons up. But we're gonna see a push from White Raw shortly. Sen being very, very smart. He, I mean, Nidus is warming to get this expansion up. He even has this bottom of the map. He's killed off this pylon. And look, White Raw also doing a good job of spotting. And here comes White Raw with a bunch of Colossus. And we're gonna see a ton of Zergling swarm in here, uh, almost as though Sen knew that we needed to be as educational as possible in this game. And of course, we're going to slow this down just so we get to really see how how badly these Zerglings get hurt. And look at White Raw. Look at the patience with this. No need to freak out and rush in there. I'm just going to happily shoot from range and use the range 9 of Colossus, which you should do. Be comfortable just having a lot of patience. There's a third Colossus. Oh, there he is. Not huge numbers of Colossus. Still just four warp gates. Um, still just one robotics facility. Expansion coming up. And this is interesting because you feel, money-wise, as Protoss against Zerg, that you can support about four gates and one robotics facility and have plenty of money to do other stuff, like expand. If you really want to be broke, you can go four warp gate and then two robotics facility for Mass Colossus. Or you can go, like, six warp gate and one robotics facility or something like that. Um, but I like that White Ra is doing this four warp gate and one robo because then he has money to expand but what especially i love about it so much is that in one of the earlier day nine dailies i did a game where i played against moonglade on kulas ravine and i did a very similar style i did early pressure with zealots i early expanded then i went for a robo and four warp gates and i went colossus zealot and expanded but the reason that I didn't do as well in, in that game as White Raw is doing in this game, I think is largely because that plus two upgrade. That plus two upgrade really makes you have a nice, clean, effective army without any really big holes in it. Um, really goes to show you now the importance of an upgrade. And watch White Raw just doing a little bit of wounding here. Yeah, and I mean, in, in the main, uh, now that we have that expansion up, we could probably add on some more unit producing structures. Perhaps a little bit of a misstep by White Raw, but of course, right when you're doing the big attack at the end of the game, it can get a little bit, a little bit intense. But watch these Zerglings just get roasted. One shot it from the back, and look at all these Zerglings just get roasted so fast. Look at the line of Zerglings in the front just evaporate so quickly. These tons getting thrown in there. Be really careful with your force field that you actually force field a little bit farther away. It's kind of easy in the midst of these battles to force field like here and here and here. And because it overlaps your units, your units get popped around a lot, and that's very dangerous. Also, while we have this battle pause, note that we have White Rot 123 food and Sen at 127 food. Look at how effective this army is going to be. Look at all the Zergans just completely annihilated at the front. These Colossi doing tons of damage. Thank God we have all these Stalkers. Look at how many Stalkers there are. Not that many Zealots in here. Just four. How many Sentries in here? Just a few. Not too many. Let's throw down some Force Fields and Guardian Shield. But mainly, it's these plus two Colossus and a lot of Sentries. Very, very nice mix. Look at how not close that battle was. Unbelievably not close. Look at Sen's food drop. White Ross staying at almost a constant 123. And I think that this is a great lesson in a timing push that centered around a very nice composition plus upgrade. There's a lot of components here. And because we got the chance to highlight all of them, we can go, ooh, White Ross, you're a very suave Ukrainian. And then you can get on the service and be a suave Ukrainian too if you want your internet connection to do that. Which is, of course, when the uh, pattern is playing. Uh, look at Sense who just plummet to this push. Tons of stalkers easily going to be able to deal with um, with any kind of push. Now, we do have Sen, who's playing under the ID Grez. Sen gives the good game. Uh, and look at White Raw. Let's just look at the relationship of these bases. We're going to back up just one second and notice that look at White Raw on the minimap. All his bases, I'm actually going to move over here to this bottom right island just so we can see the minimap really clearly. All of uh, White Raw's bases kind of point and an arrow to Sen's base. In particular, I want you to think about how hard it is to drop in this back arena and how easy it was to set up this expansion right here. Because uh, with that in mind, we're actually going to move on to the second game, right? So we have a basic idea of why this works so well. And then we're going to see an example of why it doesn't work so well. And 
with those two in mind, we can hopefully steal his build and 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 build upon it, and do something even even more awesome. So I'm gonna pop out here, and of course, you might say to yourself, "Oh no, Day Nine, how are you gonna deal with the fact that this replay is not open that you had to close, and that it is a 1.4 replay?" We'll watch this off screen. Bam, loading up the replay. Ha ha, fantastic. So, bouncing right on in here. It's going to load up uh, here in just a minute. This is again White Raw against Sen. The map is Metalopolis. There's White Raw's infamous two probes at a time whenever I get around to it. <laughs> Style split. He is spawning at the top left. And Sen is spawning at the top right. Now, you heard me say just at the end of that last game, notice how White Raw's bases were pointing towards Sen. And that the more important stuff was farther away from Sen's base. Well, notice that White Rot is going to be expanding away. He's going to be expanding here to his natural, which moves away from the Zerg. He's going to be expanding here, which moves away from Zerg even more. And that's going to become a gigantic vulnerability as time progresses. So, um, once again, we do have this uh, 9 pylon. There's a little bit of mining going on. And then what we are going to have is a 10 gateway. There it is. Awesome. Doing a little bit of scouting. Uh, I honestly really like that this guy's popping over the high ground. Just, you know, checking some stuff out. Making sure there ain't no overlord there. And then he's going to happily scout down here to the south. Isn't that clever? Isn't that clever little White Raw? He is a smart fellow. Uh, but unfortunately, um, Zerg is, is way down here at the bottom. So, a lot of chrono boosting. Look at all these probes queued up. First gateway is going to finish soon, but we still have plenty of time to build pylons. Such an easy opening when you have one gateway. Because I'm not going to lie. You you probably have heard me say, yeah, it's really important to make sure that um, it's... Um, oops, excuse me. Oh, uh, apparently the in-game volume is a little bit loud, thanks to Martine. Oh, yeah, I do remember that uh, that was quite loud. Whoopsie daisy, sorry about that. Big thanks to Martine, of course, from GLHFTV, who uh, helps manage the stream and moderate the chat. You are indeed a baller. So hopefully I was screaming loud enough into the microphone that you could hear everything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but y you've heard me say so many times how important macro is and keeping your money down. It's kind of funny. With one gateway, there is just not that much to remember. So for any of you beginner players... What happens? Well, you build up all this money that you can easily spend on expanding. It's just so such a friendly build. And of course, here's this um, very unusual 12 pool by Sen. Notice how he even has this queen almost done when he starts the hatchery. Very, very late hatch by traditional measures, but of course, very, very early queen by any measure at all. And very early second queen. Of course, it cuts into our gas. So once again, we are going to have an extraordinarily similar situation to last game. We have these zealots that are coming out at around 10. We wanted to be aggressive with them. We must be passive instead. White Rot building these pylons to begin constructing a wall here. He doesn't want to let any zerglings in. Uh, there's the forge going down. Here's the nice little place we can build a cannon. And of course, we'll probably need to build another one here. Sen making more Zerglings, but of course, Zealots are just so strong against Zerglings that I really think White Rot is going to be just fine. White Rot chrono boosting his probes. So smart. Anytime people do these aggressive builds, they tend to favor uh, chrono boosting the gateway. In fact, often they don't even consider going, for instance, two gate Zealot while constantly chrono boosting the probes in the main. When in reality, that's quite effective. Now watch this Zergling bust attempt by Sen. Notice how there's just three Zealots, and that it's not even close. I want you to see once again, as we slow this down. Notice how all these Zerglings really would have died to these three Zealots, to be entirely honest. This last guy that popped out was not essential. Look, we already have down to eight Zerglings. What, look, they all got cut in half real fast. I mean, very, very easy. So, once again, thank God Sen did that for the educational purposes. Because we can very clearly, 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 clearly see that Zealots are incredibly strong against Zerglings. And that's the thing. If your opponent goes for some sort of 12 pool, notice that um, this really is one of the first larva injects that has popped out. This set of drones. So, really, there's not that much pressure that your opponent can do early on. You're going to be just fine with Zealots. It's not a big deal at all. So, um... 
don't overreact to the early pools and think, oh, there's a big rush coming, unless you scout like a roach horn, in which case uh, it's time to shit your pants and make some cannons, because uh, roaches are pretty good against them zealots. And the expansion's popping up. I would love it if White Ra built more gas geysers right after he gets this Korra. And once again, right after that failed rush, a little zealot push. Oh, I, I, I like calling this a zealot poke. Just sort of uh, dashing in here, making sure that a spine crawler is forced down. Uh, making sure these queens are a little distracted. Oh, we have some zerglings that have been made. Queens, really bad against zealots. I mean, they're, they're, they're fine, but be bold against a queen when you have zealots. You can kill, kill a queen relatively quickly. So, oh, look, chrono boosting both of these uh, nexuses. Would still love to see more geysers go down. This zealot, I actually think, doesn't even need to be.